Oh, hello, it's cold this morning. Okay, the drive went really well yesterday. It's morning number one here at the new farm and we have a ton of work to do in this tiny home build that we're doing. So I wanna give you a tour of the space, show you what we're working with, but there's a much better way to show you than this. So, you ready? Wait for it. Let's go. Almost flew you right into a tree. Still learning how to use this thing. You ready? Yes. Let's go. Let's go see the space. Oh, what's This Good. is why you're going to be walking every day, Burns. Oh, yeah, that's great. The eyes will be burning. Hey. Oh, man. A lot of stairs. Oh, man. This thing's huge. Yeah. This is huge. No. It feels so much bigger than what I. Like what it looked than it is on an eight by 11 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it's always that way. Oh yeah, nice. This is all your living oh, and nice. kitchen on one circuit. That's AC all ready to go, right? Yeah. Oh, and they're too beautiful. Yep, got to plug both units in. We might need them this week. I doubt it. Is it really? This is gonna be. Eight. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be eight. <laughs> this is gonna be eight. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. This is the story of the plum gun. Okay, so this, you two carpenters probably know this is a six foot level. Back in the 70s in New Fairfield, Connecticut, there were two older carpenters and they were putting in a, uh, a wood stove in a woman's basement. And she had three stories. And of course they wanted to run the flue up and out the roof. They couldn't figure out how to get a straight line all the way up and out the roof to drill all the holes and everything like that. So these guys usually by noon, they were both good for three or four beers each already. And everyone was a hunter back then in that town of ours. So there was always a shotgun or something like that in the back of your pickup truck. So one of them says to the other, well, why don't I just go get my shotgun? We'll lean it against the level and we'll just shoot a hole right through and we'll have it. That's exactly what they did. And from that day on, we cannot call these levels anymore. They're always the plum gun. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually worked. <laughs> Put a deer slug in there. Oh. <laughs> they don't build like that in Connecticut anymore. They didn't even let the woman know that they were doing it that way. <laughs> <laughs> she could have been a bubble bubble walking around, boom. <laughs> 
Yeah! <laughs> Just boom! Blows the thing out the roof. Here we are. Welcome to my future office studio, but soon to be very future home. If you went and watched that video, you can take a digital tour of this space, which is kind of neat because you can see what it's going to become. But here it is. As you can see, our crew has got a ton done already. They've really made some good progress. I'm hoping to actually get to work with everyone. <laughs> I spent the entire day moving and I am so tired of moving things. Yeah. Now, where's your... This is definitely going up there. Yeah. One of the biggest issues with this move, and probably a lot of homesteaders will have this issue, or farmers, you have a ton of meat in your deep freezers. So as you saw in that video, we ran a extension cord and we plug these in, but we haven't been able to check on them the entire time. So now's the moment of truth. Did all our meat stay cold? Is it frozen? Or did we just lose hundreds of dollars of meat? Let's take a look and see. Moment of truth. Oh, there's more boxes. There's always more boxes. For real this time. Frozen solid. Frozen solid. These chest freezers, when the power goes out, if you leave them shut and they're full, they act like a battery. They store cold down in them. Even if with no power for a couple days, everything inside of them stays cold. So I wasn't worried about the one day driving. I was worried about the fact that we packed them on Thursday. Thursday to now, they would be in here. But I can see. Nothing thawed. Good way to tell if something thawed is you put like an ice cube in it. And if the ice cube is still there solid, you know it never melted. It's a good idea I never did it. <laughs> We're good. Oh. That is the last of the meat. Yep. That's how you tenderize meat? <laughs> We're done. I am never ever doing that again. I am never ever doing that again. Said twice for emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm moving and I have chest freezers full of meat, I'm having a barbecue. And, and most, all the pioneers are invited. The most epic no. <laughs> barbecue ever, yes. Oh. Okay, we're not done. We still have to move a piano. <laughs> Because we are the most smart movers in the world, we saved the piano for last. Let's move a piano after an entire day, after an entire week of moving. Let's move a piano. Yeah. It's the evil piano. Oh, it is right now. It's the evil. I don't know if we're all going to squeeze.
degrees. You're gonna lose me at this point. Oh god! Oh. Done. Oh, it wasn't recording. We gotta do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, where do you want it, babe? Um, just for now, let's leave it there until we can make some space you, for it. You, sweeter back. words have not been said to me today. Um, for now, I'm let's leave it there. Try. Wow! That was intense. Yeah, it's too bad it crinkled all this perfectly good metal. What a shame. Oh. That wind just took that metal, almost knocked this camera out. That would have been a bad ending to a pretty mediocre vlog. Mm -hmm. How'd the freezers come out, Brady? Oh. <laughs> yeah, the freezers. We were.